Hi, it's Dave McNichol here with another BOSS tutorial. Uh, today we're going to go over a slow motion effect within After Effects. So here I have this uh, video, our final result. And this has been slowed down 50%. Uh, um, I'm not quite sure how well it's going to come out uh, for you guys, but it's going to be a little bit shaky because of the screen capture. Um, but it's definitely very smooth. So basically we'll just start with a new composition. I shot this in a 5D Mark II, so I like to use this preset for my compositions. 25 frames per second. Um, just drag in our footage. So I want to start about here. So we'll, we'll go over uh, some slow motion, but also do some basic color grading uh, at the end of color correction to kind of make it a little bit more grungy. Okay, so for whatever reason we want to slow this down, um, by default you'll probably not have the stretch or switches modes or little things open. Um, so for the first step, there's two steps to making some smooth slow motion is obviously stretching the time. So if you have that, we can also access it through um, a time stretch, which will open up the dialog box, or we can just down here as we check the stretch, um, it'll do the same thing. So with the dialog, bo dialog box, we have the option to, to, if we want to reduce it down by 50%, we put in a stretch factor of 200 or we want a 33%, um, we'll go 300. We can just put in a time, your desired time, that you want the, the clip to play for, and it'll calculate the stretch factor for you. So we say 300% for this one, a little slower than that original thing I showed you. Um, so if we were to just play that now, it could be quite uh, jittery and not really smooth. Again, I'm not sure whether it's coming out perfectly on your video, but for us to help to smooth that out, uh, we have a, a tool within After Effects that's quite powerful. Um, here, as we go to frame blending, we have two options. Frame mix will mix the, the, the whole frames together and try to make it a little bit smoother. Um, it's not it's not great if we just try it out. Um, check that for frame blending. It's not actually too bad, I don't think, for this. It's not actually too bad, but some sometimes it's not not great. There's a little bit too much more motion for um, the frame mixing to handle. So if we go pixel motion, After Effects will actually individually manipulate the, the pixels as opposed to the whole frame, and will make new pixels up and put in kind of the gaps they're being created from slowing it down, which is a lot more powerful. You may have noticed that I checked this down here, enable flame, frame blending, sorry, because um, by default it's checked off and you might be like, oh, why isn't it working? But just make sure that's on. And then, so like I said before, if we have switches turned on, this here is our two different options, just like rather than coming up here between frame mix and pixel motion, that's on pixel motion at the moment. That's frame mix, pixel motion, so you can go between the different the different modes. Um, so that's it. Just put dial in your stretch factor, um, choose the, the frame blending mode you want, and make sure it's turned on. Um, and basically you have some, some smooth footage. Um, so like I said, we'll, we'll put a little bit of color correcting on this to make it a little bit more grungy. Um, so within color, oh sorry, color finesse within After Effects is a great plugin. Um, originally, it's just a, a third-party plugin that was available to purchase, but in the later versions of After Effects, is actually um, part of your your bundle as you just installed the standard After Effects. So it's about six hundred dollars um, for the full version if you were to buy it. So we just chuck that on here. Um, just click on 
full entrance. And got some great little uh, options that you can to muck around in this tool. So just really simply, without going into too much detail, uh, you can check out another tutorial with some more color grading how to, to use this. But mostly we'll just crush the blacks here. If I can grab it. Um, and pull out some of this saturation. Now you could go in here to curves and color it however you wanted. Um, but there's also another way that I like to use um, is doing this. So we create a new solid, a light tinge of blue. We'll put that underneath and we change the transfer mode of the your footage to linear light. So obviously that's just way too much. Um, if you go to the blue solid, you can press T to shortcut your opacity and just bring that down to your desired tinting level. Um, and then if you want to say, okay, actually I want green, instead of mucking around with making a new solid, you can just put a fill in and you can just, as you go, see it's working in real time. That was okay, the color we had before. So we've got an okay blue tinge, but um, we can probably get that sky looking a little bit more grungy. And one way of doing that is making a new black solid, putting that on top and changing your transfer mode to classic color burn. And again, T, and you can bring that down. So you can get some really grungy looking look. But um, as you see, so over here, the sky looks quite good up here, but our buildings are unrecognizable. So you might want to get the buildings how you want them. And then create a new, like just copy and paste, T again and bring the sky up to where you want it. So obviously you want it too far because, okay, get this going on. Just bring it up as much as you want, maybe back it off a little bit, this is always good. And then we'll create a mask up here with the, the pen tool to, to not make this new layer affect the buildings, it'll only affect the sky. So we'll just rotoscope this quickly um, I'm going to do a bit of a rough job just for the tutorial's sake so you're not sitting there forever watching. Okay, so you probably can see the um, there's quite a harsh transition between the, the two different layers. So if we were able to just press F, which brings up the mask feather, if you go crazy, you can kind of see the changing the feather. So we might go somewhere there, just looks okay. You can't really see. Okay, I might want to pull that in. But again, yeah, this is quite rough. You can spend a lot more time getting it just right. Um, so yeah, that's it. So basically, we just have to animate that. So just twirl that open. Um, click on the stopwatch for mask path. And just start animating. So we'll go towards the end of the clip. Make sure that mask isn't selected, otherwise it'll select the whole thing. It'd be annoying. Um, and just change these points on the mask. Too bad. And again, if you wanted to get crazy with your masks, and um, make this 
you know, a lot blacker. You can do as many masks as you want to kind of get the effect that you're looking for. Just play around with it. And then I think we can have a bit of trouble with that little point there, yep. Okay, so might have to get away with that. And yeah, so like I said, it's quite rough. I've affected that a little bit more myself. Okay. I don't think that looks too bad. Sure, what's happening? I've created two keyframes. Great. I don't know what to do. Okay, so that's basically a rough mask. You can kind of see you can get some cool color correction grading going on. Um, so, if uh, that's one way of of um, changing your speed but through here but say for whatever reason you wanted to uh, change your speed from say here so we better go back to 100 um, so these masks are going to be all completely wrong but probably should have done this beforehand but just a, another quick thing that I failed to mention is we're able to say if we wanted to um, change your speed of the, the footage coming through here say 100% and all of a sudden we want to jump down to 300% so it's slow motion and then back up to 100% normal speed um, you could I suppose copy and paste three versions of that um, and cut it up something like this, but that could you know, a really bad transition. If you had something like that, it'd be quite jittery and it's not going to be smooth. So another way of being able to do that, get rid of those, is to enable in your time time remapping. So basically, what this is going to do here is you're saying from this point to this point, I want you to play for that long. So that's roughly 50%, say that's 33%. Now, that here is getting, our original footage is getting pushed out here because we're stretching that footage. So we can um, get that back like this. Something roughly like that. So this is really rough. Um, so that's a bit smoother in that we can go in here and muck around with our easing functions. So we can muck around with these, get some some smooth transitions going on, play around with this and get that transition perfectly smooth. Um, so that's something that you can muck around and play with and get different results. Um, if you just want to quickly change these key points, um, if you press F9, change them back to normal. Yeah, if you press F9 on them, it'll change to smooth. And if you want to change it back to a normal keyframe, you can quickly just hold down Control and click on them. And you can try and change your easing function just like that really quickly. But We um, will just do it. this method suffices enough. Um, you can dial in perfected 
like perfectly what speed you want as opposed to the other method, the time remapping, it's, it's quite uh, just guesswork. So there we go, we have some nice smooth um, color graded footage. So I hope that this has uh, been a good tutorial for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments or any requests um, for some other tutorials, feel free to put them in the, the comments um, and we'll see you around.